Yeah. All right. So, welcome back to uh, Castle Super Runbacks, Castle Super Undo, Super Retcon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're joined by a special guest this week. Hey there, Susie. Hello, everyone. How's it going? It's great to finally be in the castle. It's only taken you guys like what three years to we get me just in had castle. to wait for the absolutely perfect confluence of events to invite you over which is silly because we invited you and then all that shit happened yeah so we had to wait for what is essentially a sphere hunter week in the news uh it's kind of ridiculous how much is happening that is directly related to your world this week yeah um, it's really cool too like like there's a lot of um well, not a lot. There was a little bit of shit, you know, the beginning of last week, but then it just kind of ex it exploded into like happy, like fun time, which is great, you know. It's, it's been great, but yeah, thanks oh for having God. me on. It's fun. <laughs> I li I literally forgot like the second biggest news of this week. I literally completely forgot about everything to do with Konami. I, f right. I thought that was a different week. <laughs> yeah, uh, that that all went down. Um... Do you want to know something really funny? You just yeah. said that, and then I remembered that that happened too. Because I kind of I forgot thinking, that that happened. I was thinking about Capcom, and I was thinking about Bayonetta. I'm like, wow, that's a crazy week. I'm like, oh no, all that Silent Hill fucking shit happened this week too. Oh yeah. Christ! Which your reaction to the SH2 remake was really funny, in my opinion. Oh, thank you. Well, we'll get into that Capcom. shortly. <laughs> yes. But Susie, thanks for coming on the show. We're glad to have you. Yeah. Glad so to be here. We, might, we might as well start with you because you're you're the guest. What have you been doing this week? What's what's new in your world? Um, I've been uh, uh, defending people who I shouldn't have defended <laughs> without I've... a whole lot of evidence, and uh, you know, just being excited about Resident Evil. You know, it's great. It's great. <sighs> yeah. So I mean, I think with that. You're, you're, Let's just get into it. Fuck it. Uh, straight up, like so. The obviously the the Bayonetta three situation has uh, uh, continued to evolve, and um, as we did have our initial feelings last week about how this looks pretty bad, but let's see what develops, and what has developed has been um, quite a ridiculous, confusing sequence of events. Um, at the end of the day, it seems as if uh, so. Uh, Dracian Schreier, who uh, Schreier, excuse me, who like reported um, some some uh, extra details, um, was able to basically describe that like uh, people that saw the contract that Helena Taylor was offered uh, for those two of you separate who, people. Yes, two well, two separate sources, and and for, for those of you who are like missing the first half of the story, that you can check out last week for you know talk about Bayonetta three and Helena Taylor, the voice actor who uh, was um, saying that she was uh, being uh, offered an insulting amount for her role to return, and uh, eventually they parted ways, um, not too amicably, um, and was calling for a boycott of Bayonetta three. So the the update to that has been that uh, two separate sources have confirmed that. Uh, the offer that she was given uh, was not, in fact, $4,000 for the entire game, but something closer resembling $4,000 per session, to which there would have been at least three or four. Either way, a total of about 15000 was uh, being um, put around as the, as the amount. Um, and then... Um, there were, uh, of course, like, uh, and then uh, the larger discussion eventually led to, um, as we know, like, Jennifer Hale just got, uh, like, she was in the crossfires for very, for no mm -hmm. reason in that case. And um, she kind of came out and said, like, hey, as we spoke about, or I'm under NDA, can't really say much, but, you know, I do my due diligence. And, you know, she kind of just took the job and she can't really elaborate much further, but, like, you know, if you know her character, then you know her well enough to know that she wouldn't be doing what the implication of the message was, which is kind of like coming in on the back end and like taking over a role that somebody uh, who was also a part of the same union wouldn't be willing to take, right? Um, and and the perception was that, you know, Platinum was essentially trying to price uh, um, Helena out of the situation and then confusingly hire someone that was probably more expensive. So uh, the elaboration then, um, I guess, shows that 
the deal was originally the, the deal she was referring to about the four thousand dollars total was actually a a like last cameo offer that was yeah made. it was we're not gonna hire you for the main role but we'll offer you a cameo spot that'd be like one session for 4k which by and the way the... um just completely confirmed my theory about that game that you're not yeah. playing as well Bayonetta. the the last trailer like, that came out that shows much. classic bayonetta getting fucking killed in it and i'm yeah. looking at that and I'm like oh that was what that was what uh, helena taylor was gonna be yeah so it was gonna be classic bayonetta nice. So the, the, the like, ex that weird sort of copium fan theory about the voice acting being like, oh, yeah, maybe she'll return to play the original and then there'll be something else going on. Actually, it seemed like they had the same thing in mind and were going to go for it uh, or try to set that up as a, as a, a yeah. last ditch attempt. <laughs> um, but what Helena neglected to mention in those videos, uh, I, just, I guess lie by omission, unfortunately, just the idea that... Um, the original offer was uh, much higher than she originally specified. That wasn't the final offer for her to come in and voice the the character and in, in, throughout the entire game. It was for this cameo role. She was originally negotiating for something higher than that. Um, then there was act, and then uh, Platinum tweeted. They came out and said that they nothing. They said <laughs> we support what Jennifer Hale says, and that's about it, right? Sure. That, that that's what they said, right? And you know, sure. Um, and then this morning, actually, as I was, as I was like going to bed, I, I, I made the mistake of refreshing my phone and then, mm. uh, I saw, yeah. So then a second thread, uh, that Helena started popped up where she was elaborating further, um, on what was being that's said. A, that's a kind way to put it. And it, 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 well, the thing is, is that the initial defense that she made was basically um, say, uh, saying that the entire uh, uh, Jason Schreier's article and, and the entire story was a lie, right? Yeah. And um, then the new the new thread now kind of confirms those some of those details. So um, <sighs> it it gets really weird when it comes down to it, and I think that like it unfortunately a lot of this shit is going to probably do a great job of distracting from a super valid real consideration, which mm -hmm. is voice actors being underpaid and treated like shit in the industry, um, which is, you know, I would hope that at the very least, if anything good can come from this, it would be like that conversation being put in the spotlight, you know? Um, oh, the thing that, that stood out to me, and I'm sure I'm sure it stood out to you, I think you mentioned as much, Wooly. I, don't, I didn't talk to you about it, Susie, at the time, but I'm sure it also... Uh, like was odd is like if if you're being offered this like joke amount for your work as a union performer if they had hired a non-union performer to replace you everyone could go oh well there it is i mean they offered somebody like four hundred dollars and they took it and that's bullshit but they didn't just hire a union replacement they hired the union replacement jen hale is like the fucking face of the voice yeah. acting sag afro union so it, it was like it was really strange and so willie and i speculated last week on the podcast like was this somebody in the company trying to get rid of her and all this thing because it, it's all phrased in this thing of this person has come forth with a labor complaint and i want to take that labor complaint seriously as do both of you guys so I don't want to sit here and look at these kinds of inconsistencies and say, that sounds like bullshit. Mm -hmm. However, upon the details coming out from Bloomberg and her going, that's all bullshit. And then like two or three days later going, okay, well, most of it's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe the number I quoted was not the number that it was. It was actually five times that number. But it they, basically it's like, still bullshit. I'm seeing She's like, I'm seeing people calling me a liar, so uh, let me tell you how I lied about a few things. I yeah. saw that guy's yeah. tweet, and it cracked just... me up. <laughs> like, I'm not on. a liar. These are just the lies yeah, that no. I told. And the thing is, lie by omission is still, like, it, it's still a lie, right? And that, and when you're trying to galvanize the goodwill of a fan base, of a, of a, product, a thing that, like, you know, a product that, like, people care about, and you're trying to, I guess, kind of, like, 
push for a cause that in most cases when you hear about something oh big corpo fucking over an individual yeah gee yeah. how surprising right yeah leave that so, in a second exactly you know and i think everyone did they're like oh my god not here like really okay well here we go again right like yeah and then... yeah I, I you know what i would like to elaborate on my stance as mm -hmm, well like because mm -hmm. i was like one of the loudest um people that came out like immediately and support her like i remember like i woke up that morning and then saw her string of tweets and the first one had like a hundred likes or whatever mm -hmm. and i was like oh, no one's going to see this. Let me, like, try to signal boost it. And I did this, like, angrily worded tweet of, like, oh, it looks like the voice change, like, actually runs a lot deeper and blah, blah, blah. And, like, you know, it turns out voice actors aren't getting paid a living wage. And, like, I came at it from an, ex from, um, an experience of having a lot of, like, really good personal friends that I hang out with on, on the regular, you know, where I see their, you know, their, um, what do you call it? They're, like, their spreadsheets with like all of their work hours, the games or anime that they work on, the amount that they're paid, it's usually dog shit compared mm -hmm. to- Oh, it's easy to mm -hmm. believe because like yeah. we brought up uh, uh, last week of like the Jujutsu Kai Kaisen people being paid like 150 bucks to do like yeah. an entire film. Yeah. Like it's mm -hmm. fucking ridiculous. It's no, so no, easy It's insane. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I came at it with such a personal um, stance, you know, of like, oh yeah, like I literally see my friends a lot of the time like struggling to pay rent or even to like buy food for themselves like just to live comfortably mm -hmm. and they have to make all of their money off of maybe not all of it but you know 99 percent of their money doing a convention appearance like for five grand and sometimes conventions don't want to do that you know they don't mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. they'll be like oh we're interested in having you and then it's like oh well my thing is like five grand and then they'll be like oh we're not interested in having you anymore so it's like of course when I see not just any voice actor, but Bayonetta, like mm -hmm. one of my favorite characters, like an iconic character and an iconic performance too. Like no one else sounds like Helena Taylor, you know, like yeah, I'll and... always love her performances in those games, but it's just like, it's a no brainer, right? Like literally everyone, not it... everyone, but mostly I... everyone came out in support. I mean, it kind of reminds me like when you're describing the, like the voice actor circuit, like it's almost like how, um, bands make no money on the album because of recording uh, a studio about the shirts and, man yeah. right so you got to go buy a t-shirt and go to the concert right that's the kind of thing where like yep yeah, if they're going to do the contour that's how you can help um but that's exactly it and, and and it's 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 a shitty situation in many instances to the point where like you know we discussed as well like the fact that it's not just uh, the perception of the original story but she calls for the boycott and that is something that you know, traditionally, that has not worked very well in the industry. It's a it's, oh, it's, it, a, it's a boycott free industry. Know. There's no boycott that's ever meant yeah. shit. But that being said, as I, I think we fairly said, it's like you do whatever you feel you want to do, however you feel comfortable. And to me, it was something where I'm like, OK, if this is as bad as it sounds, which is um, for some for some goddamn reason, they decided to just be extremely dishonest and kind of screw over the star of the franchise and this is how you know it's gonna go down i'm like yeah no i would feel I, I could i would feel bad about just being like okay well time to buy an lp it and just go on with that right so yeah, i yeah. was willing to go along with that um and, I, and you know and i was pretty much just like yeah again i was like oh and there's always yuzu whatever do what you want to do but um that's definitely it's it's for a game that is like as beloved to all of us here as as Bayo. Like that's a different thing, difficult yeah. thing to call. But I think like, um, in a situation where an individual is being like fucked over significantly enough, like it's a call I'm willing to make. You know, um, but when you kind of come back around and see this now, right, and you go like, oh man, like you were trying to weaponize the fan base in a way that. Like there's still an argument you can make about because she said all as well that she that like the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar offer is ludicrous. I never asked for that, right? And the article says, yeah, well, but I, you all you also said that the original amount was four thousand. 
and there's a there's yeah. a line somewhere between 250 and six digit figures that could still be applicable there um there's a typo that where she says fifty thousand extra it might have been five thousand extra i, I want to take this away for a second because it's the thing that really stands out the most to me about the breakdown of her statements so one of the things that you said earlier woolly was like a lie of omission so the first statement was a de facto lie of omission because she is talking about the most recent offer and ignoring the fact that she was probably offered like uh, 12 to 20k for three to five sessions right that you can you can make the argument for that right you can make the argument that that is like the f final 4k offer was the part she was mad about blah 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 right but the part that it goes from live omission to blatant falsehood is where when the bloomberg article came out she responded to it mm -hmm. saying the idea that i could have made fifteen thousand dollars off of bayonetta 3 is a joke that is a complete lie like the, I, my, I might be a word or two off, but it's incredibly clear. And then, like, three days later, okay, so maybe I could have made 15K off of it, but really, blah, blah, blah. And then comes, like, that the second batch of, of tweets that is, is, you know, they're just tweets. They're, they're not the video uh, presentations right. that she did for the first batch. This is one of those things that maybe I'm reading too far into it. But when you're, like angry and like yelling about your labor conditions and how somebody has fucked you over and you may have screwed up talking it is a wild typo to screw up the number five thousand and fifty thousand and it the is comma is the only thing, thing that makes that that you're like okay benefit of the doubt the comma came after the five we're assuming you meant to say five thousand right Right, <laughs> because the the range of this story is going upwards above fifty thousand, so it's not impl impossible or implausible to think that would have been the case. Um, so there's... you do the five thousand, fifty thousand one, and then that follows with, like, so I'm like I'm reading this, and like this fucking tastes like bullshit, right? But then the, the for me, in my personal opinion, is you get to the last two tweets, which were like later. Where she describes, I will post the 14 charities so that you can donate to charity instead of buying this game from corrupt, greedy people. There are people who are attempting to throw shade and discredit what I say. The industry is powerful. They have powerful journalists, too. Mm. They're trying to save their asset. Don't fall for it. And then all the boycott things. That sounds like a crazy person. Um, well, I mean, I got to... I gotta be honest with you guys, when I did all of my supportive tweets, I only saw the first three parts of her video thing. I didn't see the fourth part because mm -hmm. it wasn't connected to the first three parts. Mm -hmm. There was a where fourth part. On... one where she talked all that shit. Yeah, it was, it was a little... She goes on a religious... It was a little bit rant. of... It took me back to my old days. <laughs> I could imagine. It took me back a little bit. One still. I didn't, um, I didn't see the one where didn't... she does the religious thing. Yeah. it. I, I was like, ooh, we're, we're back in the church basement. Okay. <laughs> well... Um, here's the yeah. thing though, right? There's, there's a couple of, uh, and because the problem is that like none of that stuff like should ultimately matter in, again, what is a legitimate discussion about like voice actors and what they should get paid. And I think that in a, in a, in a, in, in, in multiple industries, right? In film, in cartoons, in animation, in all these different places, when a, a, a voice actor is an actor and that actor is paid if they're the principal as such, and royalties are a part of that as well. So it's not an a, a, a unreasonable discussion to have um, in regards to like th whether a, the star of a franchise should be entitled to royalties on their contract or something along those lines, right? I think, of course, like you do it all in proportion with um, the scale of a project and, and it needs to make sense. You know, like not every movie is... Uh, well, uh, well, not every game is, is is an indie game. Not every game is AAA, right? So wherever that's mm -hmm. at, you can have a fair discussion about um, how voice actors should be the same as they are in other mediums. Um, what is just batshit crazy <laughs> is the figure where she's like, and by the oh, way, man. Bayonetta is a half billion dollar franchise. According <laughs> to fucking what genie? What? Matt, and it's that, like okay that was like that should have been the first red flag for me but like, i kind of looked what? over it because it's like 
you you think about it and you're like the game has been re-released a lot of times but it's I also know exactly been where she got that number yes by the way. so Sale, yeah you know? so like, the theory <laughs> right um um the theory is that like okay if we work backwards on the math 450 that... million divided oh, by 60 dollars no. 7.5 million, million which according to vgcharts.com is the sales of the of one and two including the repackages oh, include no. we all know how the game industry works and like there's digital copies there's a million other factors but if you just go to vgcharts.com see the Which number is bullshit. that has and always been bullshit it's a speculative number that's complete exactly and then multiply that by 60 bucks and go oh every single version of this game that is owned by someone was purchased for full msrp like you I would pull it right out of my ass right dollars. now, saying that that maybe eighty percent of all Bayonetta copies ever were sold at a discount. It's crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like the three of us, we bought Bayonetta one at full price. Oh, I, okay? I, I bought Bayonetta one it. at full price like four times. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. I imported the, the the European special box for the Wii U version of two. You know, with the book and shit. See? Like, yeah, we're yeah. doing it, but. You know what? I know that game didn't sell that many copies because when the guy sold me Bayonetta one early, like like three weeks early, he did so because he didn't give a shit because there were only two copies in the fucking store for the entire initial allotment. Mm, mm. Like that game um, was getting sent out like one or two yeah. copies so, total for so allotment. Here's so here's the other thing too, right? We're, yeah, we're talking about a Wii U game, right? Then on top of on top of that, we're talking about a Wii U game. Um, even if you take those cumulative numbers and you put them together, you're still not hitting 7.5 because um, that's it, it, I think it was like three a piece, right? So then it's like you also have to include Smash Brothers and Bayonetta's DLC uh, uh, in Smash for Wii U. To possibly get that number up to we also a gotta half billion dollars. Nintendo marketing and Sega's marketing budget. It, this you don't. It just it's, the, it, the, you the numbers don't work. Million things. It makes no sense. But like that's about the perception. The anime, guys, you're forgetting about the, oh, the groundbreaking <laughs> fucking... ten out of ten anime. Oh, that piece <laughs> of, of course. shit. Of course, how could we? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you're just kind of seeing this really weird thing of like, okay, that's what she thinks it it's worth and is is making and to us we're like you mean that character action game we love that's been on life support since the moment it was announced yeah like there's a reason why it's been taking literally seven years for it to come out <laughs> can't oh. be a good uh, reason right there's like, there's don't forget there's so anarchy reigns of course that pumped oh, the numbers up oh, too yeah. uh th there's yeah. so much to unpack here so like i went i went and did like like some some IMDB digging on okay. Helena Taylor during this to get like some kind of background. I did the background, too. <laughs> the background that I got is that uh, she's prefer she's primarily a theater actor, like a live theater actor, and her roles in video games. She has uh, one or two roles uh, smattering here or there in 2007 and 2008, but 99 percent of her video game roles are Bayonetta and Bayonetta again, and also Bayonetta, yeah. which more than anything to me says that this is a person who is not actually in tune with the video game voice acting industry right right she right, is somebody right, from the right. theater world who comes in did this great character but doesn't really get it mm -hmm. which is why every time she talks about it it sounds like nonsense because it is yeah and her expectations are also like there's a much broader discussion to have about video game voice acting compared to anime voice acting compared to film voice acting to theater acting to film acting in which most people are if we go into it we'll probably think i have the shittiest take ever which is that video game voice acting is not as important as acting in a television program or a film yeah. because if you remove it yeah. If you remove remember... the voice acting from a game, you still have a game. If I remove Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible, there's a empty fucking room. Yes, no, you made that take, and like, it, there's some there's some genres where that matters more than others. But for a, a lot of games where it's a cinematic experience and or you're just trying to appeal to people, it's fucking important. Like you gotta sure, you know. But but it's it's not as important. And regardless of whether I'm right or not. 
the general consensus in the hiring practice is that it's not. But if you're coming from theater, which the pipeline of theater usually heads to TV or Broadway or mm -hmm. film, the expectation is going to be that you're going to get royalties on a big project. The expectation is that if you if you have enough clout and you're the 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 guy that you can push for uh, a higher rate because you're mm -hmm. so intrinsic to the the portrayal of the character or your mm -hmm. your the the thing will suffer dramatically. But games don't give a shit. And whether or not it's of your personal opinion that the actor matters more, like I love somebody in chat just points out correctly. I love Legacy of Kane. Mm -hmm. Legacy of Kane is defined by Michael Bell and uh, Simon Templeman, and unfortunately Tony J, who is now fucking dead. Um, and I would not want a Legacy of Kane game without them. But the game industry has proved in the most dramatic way possible that even if you replace a character who has been voice acted by somebody for like 20 fucking years like david Hayter, with some guy from hollywood it doesn't affect shit in terms of actual sale if the game is still good um, oh yeah it'll the game will still sell regardless if, if the game is still good definitely it is a medium where like there is the most going on without the voice actor because you have the interactive I was gonna say, I was gonna game. say sometimes the game isn't good and it still sells but well, yes because but because like <laughs> in a movie yeah. again a movie it's just entirely a passive experience same thing for you know anything animated or so but like in a game there is there is still an experience you can have outside of the assets right I that mean, is true shit. at the same We've time got spear hunter on the show right now susie how important was it that we had the fucking last names of the cast in fucking Resident Evil 1. They just found those people like two months ago. It's true. Mm. They Those people didn't even know what Resident Evil was. Right. So but, amazing. But can, like, and, and, it, and then because games are so varied, it depends on context to context. Counterpoint, Nickelodeon All-Stars. Oh, yeah. No. It's just fucking <laughs> right? Oh, it doesn't have the voices? Oh, die. Done. Dead, over, completely yeah. finished, annihilated in one fell swoop. You know, so it does matter contextually. Um, the thing is, is that um, when it comes to uh, it's like a, a voice actor coming from outside and like joint being a part of the industry, like playing a one role in a game or something. I'm reminded of like almost like Kreia, you know, about how it's like yo mm -hmm. that you can show up and kill it and do an amazing job, but like that understanding of what the industry is like and this type of confusion, um, it seems as if that if you're willing to kind of do this and kind of torch your career, it's probably mm -hmm. because you're not really looking to continue working in this industry, you know, if you're if you're yeah. willing to, to torch it like that. Um, and I remember that like her response was very telling when like right apart uh, right after the the Bloomberg stuff came out. I just um, want to wash my hands of this. I want to yes, be out. I'm yeah, out. I, I'm looking forward to putting this behind me and going back to the it's theater. Like... And it's like, that's not the type of response you'd expect after someone shows receipts, right? Yeah. It's like, why, why even, one, why bring it up at all? And two, that sounds like something that someone who just got caught says. You know, yeah, it's like if lie. somebody... It's like if somebody was sitting there minding their own business and out loud to the ether said, boy, the GameCube was blue. And then when somebody starts to argue with them, goes, I don't, I'm so sick of this goddamn argument. I hate having it. I just want to be free of this GameCube argument, says yeah. man who brought it up. Yeah, it, 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 that's, that's not, that's a, that was a very confusing line because it's like, so then... Like it's all because again the part of the whole like keep this up the boycott the idea of this is what they're doing and etc. It feels like you're like okay I don't want to talk about this anymore let's just move on you know like that's but no like... I'm back in boycott it still hmm. yeah and don't call me a bayo nutter okay I hate it like, I what hate is it wait wait, wait 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 it's what terrible excuse <laughs> are you not seeing this hashtag she's like hello all my fellow bayo nutters <laughs> bayo nutters like what is a bayo nutter <laughs> Oh, it sucks. Oh, no. Bayonetta sounds like, uh, <laughs> sounds like someone that does something else with Bayonetta. Oh. You know I mean? 
I'll ban that in my own time. Thank you. <laughs> I, think <laughs> I, yeah. I think there's a, like a much. grand takeaway that we can all uh, handle on this, which is, uh, if all possible, wait for receipts. But more than that is that uh, whoever is running Platinum right now needs to open their office door, walk about 15 feet, and slap the fucking phone out of Kamiya's <laughs> hand. Not good enough. Defenestrated. It's so bad. From the top of the Shin Umeda, just 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 yeet <laughs> into the distance. Like, the, the way I described it was like, like can you imagine if Kamiya just came out and was like, "Hello, everyone. I understand these allegations oh, look very dire." He like slowly takes his glasses off, like, <laughs> but I just want you all to know that I have evidence that goes against Miss Taylor's claims. And instead, he's like literally like in a high high speed chase from the law with his middle finger out the window. <laughs> like fuck everyone. Like he was he was acting as if he was in the wrong. You know what I mean? Like, like the, the, like just the block, phrasing, block 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 fuck but, everyone. But instead of in a, remember, in a high speed chase, he's just doing burnouts in a parking lot. Like yeah, <laughs> just, I remember he's not going anywhere. <laughs> Paige was like following Didn't this help, stuff on her man. phone, and then I hadn't seen the Kamiya shit, and she's like, "What the fuck is this?" And shows me, "Beware my rules." Yeah, it's like, yeah. What, what the? F you look so guilty, bro. You look like a fucking asshole. Like, why? The, yeah. The, it did not help. It really did not help at the time. You know. Ugh, man. Yeah. Just there's a, you gotta get you gotta get the phone out of his hands, especially in situations like that, because that becomes the official response, right? Um, and he, he if, wasn't wrong, but if <laughs> if Jesus. Mia had not Ugh. said anything at all, mm -hmm. my default stance the day last Monday would have been, I don't know, this seems confusing. Let's wait for more details. But because his shit was so inflammatory and looked so fucking well, guilty, I came to the somewhat understandable conclusion of it feels like Platinum fucked this lady over. Um, yeah, but but I would say that, like, no, our, the default stance was, this is confusing, let's wait for more details, but also, th like, historically, people get fucked over by the company, so oh, yeah. you're just willing to lean in that direction as you wait for more details, you know? Um, and that's, I think, a completely reasonable thing to do, given the, the, the history of it, given, you know, and, and yeah. that, that's exactly it. I think if you're kind of looking to be like, okay, well... Like, we want to ideally have an industry where people are not treated like shit, so let's support the not shit treatment of people because somebody tells you that story. That's a reasonable stance to take, and then you find out that it turns out they were lying by omission. Okay, well, now we yeah. update the take, you know? And based on, you know, individual experience, it's just like, oh, yeah, I believe you because I've seen this happen a million times with other people, you know, mm -hmm. like... Like, especially in, like, you know, the Resident Evil community, like, you know, Allison mm -hmm. Court voiced Claire forever, and she got burned by that whole situation, and just, just so there's so many other examples of this, of this type of thing happening, not to this extent, obviously. Yeah, voice acting like, sucks. It, it, I got like, 10 million it. views on this thing, and TMZ is reporting on it. Literally every, everyone is reporting on it. Like, it, it, it just... It became something so huge, just out of there, nowhere, and it's there's this real sucks. element to the way Taylor is is dealing with it now, uh, on the assumption that she made a fib, in which yeah. she wanted to say her piece and she wanted to kind of thumb it in the eye, and it really, really ran away from her. Like it is, it is, like. If, if it was going to grow into this massive swell, it would have hopefully have been in this massive swell of a boycott. Instead, it's just big. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, we're, we're, this podcast is talking about it two weeks in a row, mm -hmm. yeah. for example. It's big it, for just an undefinable reason. Like it could be anything. It could be, oh, I'm going to stand by her. Oh, oh, you know, she's a liar. Oh, I feel bad for supporting her. Oh, she did, did said what in her past? Like, you know, it's just. It's just a shit show, like, it, no matter it, how you look at it. Yeah, well, it's big because it's a messy bitch drama. It's a, just, it's a yeah. messy ass <laughs> drama. And we're messy bitches that love drama, so we're always going to fucking pay attention to that shit, you know? And it, it unfortunately just, like, 
it it shook it shook out in the way that you would almost never expect it to which is it turns out that the you know the 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 victim in this case is not being completely forward is just lying about stuff so um and what's the what's the end result of all this drama well bayo 3 is assuredly going to be the best selling bayonetta game as the news catapulted it up to the top of amazon pre-orders because there's no such thing as bad publicity. And unironically saved the franchise, potentially. Yeah, probably. We might get so many more Man. Bayonetta games out of this. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the like, there was a moment, too, you have to admit, when Kamiya's Twitter went down and you were like, yeah. oh, thank God. <laughs> right? There was a bit of a moment of like, yeah. okay, all right, they did it. They, they got him. They took the, the Union Jack glove off. <laughs> you know that he uses yeah. to type with finally and then he's like nah phoenix rising i'm back and you're like oh god damn it <laughs> and, you know but, just between yeah. uh you guys and all however many people are watching this i have friends that are playing the game right now and they're saying it's pretty fucking good so I'm, that just gets what? me more excited to play yeah. it so yeah, get out go. get out of town you there are people playing that game that's crazy i wish yeah. i was one of those people but I'm not. yeah same <laughs> same uh, I mean, started playing two on the over on the channel just in in you know hoping to ramp up and 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 run right into three as at, 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 at you know at launch um and that's that's what we're gonna do um because yeah i i man it felt bad to just be like motherfucker one of the things i care about the most you know just can't have nice things and like us getting into that mode where we have multiple podcasts of just, well, everything you like is going to have something shitty about it. And you just have to kind of, you know what I mean? Like that sort of vibe. And that's not something that to get rid of, because for all we know, that's still the case. But it's just, it's getting so fucking exhausting to just be like, okay, how does the thing I love, like devour babies to to feed itself you know like how many how souls does it feel has it consumed that your hobby de facto renders you ethically compromised uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you know like, i guess I, I, I just can't use anything in my house then like i can't do anything in my life like sorry guys the, the best <laughs> kites pat did you know the best kites are that fly are made of the skin of orphans did you know <sighs> Orphan so skin fun, just flies really nice. The, <laughs> more the than gag other there material. is that... So the, the gag is you go with orphan skin on that. But, like, you you were all the way up to the word skin, and I couldn't tell if you were going to make a joke or if it was going to be a depressing reality, like, like baby <laughs> otter skin, right? Like, makes the best yeah. kites because of the fucking... The, 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 the easel goer resistance on the, the the baby fly like how i don't fucking know yeah like is the, how many how many drops of manatee blood are in this phone i don't know your tennis <laughs> yeah. racket is probably made of cat gut that is a thing for real that's what i was gonna say i was literally about to say that like oh i just you know i ordered my dream guitar which happens to be eno's guitar i can't wait to play it on mm. these cat gut guitar strings marlene oh, like Made awesome. of cat gut. Yeah, Mar <laughs> yeah Marlene. You know, you know, this might be a bit of an aside, but uh, it's a story that I want to tell regardless. I had a friend of mine who went to vet school, and the first thing, like literally semester one of vet school, as part of the training, uh, one for, for phys manual skills as well as like wash them out, was here is the overflow from the kill room in the your local vet's. Um, here is like a hundred dead cats. You are going to skin all of them throughout the semester. <laughs> you have a you have a a dead cat skinning quota because you need to get used to cutting into cats and dogs without freaking the fuck out. And that washes the the fucking class the fuck out. Like eighty percent get like in two in and they're done they are not going to be vets cool but serial killer training nice but the goofiest part about it is i'm talking to my friend and i'm like wow that seems really horrible she's like yeah it is but the funny thing is is are you aware of the phrase there's more than one way to skin a cat 
To which I go, yeah. And she goes, not really. <laughs> There's one good way to skin a cat. Uh, if you want to get all of it. And I'm like, oh, what, cool. That's what like a broken person says. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like, yeah, that's that's like their after dinner raconteur you know little stories like did you know there's actually only one good way and you look into the dead of their eyes and the reflection yeah gone. yeah it's just... <sighs> hey man no me the medical arts require traumatic learning i mean what well, you're still in montreal and i grew up there where like our famous medical prestigious university was famous in medical by stealing corpses from the cemetery up on top of the hill and rolling them down to be operated on by students Gotta pass those classes somehow, man. Yeah. Has to be done. Okay. Has to be done. It's the only way. <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, I'm gonna that... be playing Bayonetta three. I'm gonna make a big review on it where I dress like Bayonetta and play the piano, and I already have a giant piece of art that would cost way too much money. Hell yeah. And you know, fuck boycott, whatever. I'm gonna oh. play it. Um, I'm probably gonna try and and do it in one go. I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a shot and see if that works. I yeah. bet I can. I bet I totally it. can. Um, I, I, unfortunately, it. unfortunately, the the uh, COVID time delay over here has made it so that I'm not gonna be finishing two on time to roll right into three. You so. can if you just fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> not with that attitude. No. Yeah, you know what no. you have to do, Willie. You have to I'm wear that bloody, bloody, short bloody marionette. I'm gonna try you gotta my... wear that bloody marionette and just auto combo your way through. The game. Oh no! <laughs> as much as it hurts you, you, gotta do it. Just put it on. Yeah, I'm sitting. My couch has like 30 amiibos next to me. By the way, like I'm just like I'm like, give me the free fucking rings. I don't give a shit. I'm a I'm using them all every single day, no matter how much you limit me. Um, but uh, no, thank you for uh, coining. Uh, the term sword fucking, by the way, Susie. Uh, yes. That's a good ass yes. word, and I hope we get to use it again. Yep. I hope so too. I mean, it looks like uh, she's going to be on the battlefield with you this time. So, um, Madama Butterfly. M Madama Butterfly Pat in in the in in one of the early levels of Bayo, she comes in and she sword fucks a beloved. Like right, I know exactly what you're talking about, and then. It is it's... the most suggestive animation you will <laughs> yeah. ever see. And you're just like, yeah, that's that's exactly what's happening to that fucking angel. Goddamn. Perfect. Can you can you imagine just like writing that in a script and being like, I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't say this. And then writing like three other lines and then getting to the recording process and being like, she's so cool. She sword fucks angels to death. <laughs> like, just just fuck it. Just do it. That's Nicely what it done. is. Nicely done. <laughs> like... We commit. We commit. <laughs> um okay so uh that's one chunk uh out of the way i suppose yeah and then there were other things so <laughs> before we move on i th this story had such an emotional roller coaster for us as content creators about to cover bayo because it was this deep stomach of oh no to yeah i don't give a shit anymore to, I'm going to fucking do it out of fucking spite. I'm so sick yeah. of this bullshit. I mean, dude, like eight years, man. 2014. You know? That's a fucking... That's a, it, it felt real shit. Having that drop in the, the final hour, no less. Which, my initial thought was that, like, maybe it happened as the game was coming out. Because she was thinking, like, trying to make it work up until the last second. You know? That's... No, it was it, it was clearly timed with the clearly release. right. So yeah, yeah. There um, is a clip of her uh, from a very old interview of saying that she did she recorded Bayonetta one and two in like four hour four day sessions or something. So maybe mm -hmm. she was like holding on to hope that Platinum would be like, oh yeah, you could just come back it's fine here's 50 grand like just shit knock went it out. gold like a month ago like, i know yeah there's no long way done. <laughs> like, um and and no you fucking know way. yeah and, and i and i and i you know I, I the the and i hope again this will just spotlight other stories that are that are 
been coming out with uh, uh, one I read about, which also like, <laughs> I mean, the, the timing couldn't be better for me. But like uh, the voice actor for Morden in Mass Effect 3, who I had no idea changed, right? Mm -hmm. I found out through this uh, uh, controversy, like that he got replaced, and that like the he came out to basically explain how voice actors get paid and how the sessions go and how it's usually pretty low and there's kind of a you, like you just you know you do multiple gigs and you try to try mm -hmm. to make it that way. Um, but again, like that's for somebody that is actively trying to voice many roles in the industry and not necessarily just like coming in to do one's particular one, you know. Um, but yeah, I didn't know uh, he changed either. Yeah, so that like though I I read the story about how or it was it was his post about how that um you know there was some controversy over like him replacing the the voice actor for in two and I was like oh no like damn that I'm right I'm in two right now that's a bummer that there's a replacement happening but um you can't tell okay I couldn't even it's, tell it's it's difference. it's a combination of. Uh, the actor doing a really good job approximating him and throwing, throwing on, on this, this fucking Solarian voice bullshit, bullshit so sure. you can't, can't even tell, tell the difference. difference. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I was like, did I just imagine that? Like, of, what, what was that? Of <laughs> what are you talking about? Of all the races to to mask <laughs> the, the the person, that would be the, the one that would mask it the best, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, th there's, anyway. there's, yeah. Uh, hopefully that, uh, yeah. This, this, this type of shit will, um, you know, uh, whatever. I'm repeating myself. Yeah. Just right. throw every voice actor into the ocean. There you go. No voice actor. No ever. more voices. <laughs> done. No done. more drama. We're done. We solved it. D you, you know what? Know Just throw away every video game. Like, All of it. They're bad. They're bad for you. Like, I'm bald because of them. <laughs> I like I bet you Symphony of the Night would have been talked about at least half as much if that had no voice acting in it. That thing that thing oh, yeah. would have fucking hit and would have been like, okay, cool. Oh yeah, die monster, you don't belong in this world. I'm reading Every that in my I voice in my own head, and it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I think about Castlevania Symphony of the Night, all I can think of is how it took like 20 years for me to confirm that the guy who voices Richter is in fact also Chris from Resident Evil 1 because yep. they sound completely the same. And he does it like the exact same awful bullshit happened to him in both roles with the fucking chopped up bullshit audio, which is why they sound so god awful. Because he's like a normal guy. Uh, yeah. He doesn't talk like that. <laughs> I actually figured I found that out recently as well. I was like, oh, yeah, that is that is Chris Redfield. <laughs> it's just the exact same sound of voice. But yeah, it so, wasn't before we move on. Didn't Symphony of the Night also get like a full like redub for like a PSP version? Did they? If it that did, I don't care. Quote unquote better. That seems insane. Why would you do? Let's, I'm sure the nuts. chat would. Uh, um, uh, Jesus Christ. 